Hi, Rajdeep. Thank you so much for taking out time to interview with us. For the viewers, maybe request you to please share your results on the GMAT. Yeah, hi, Dikshita. I would like to thank Express Global for reaching out. It's a really pleasure to be a part of this new initiative that you've made. I would like to share my GMAT results. It's, uh, I scored a 750 on the GMAT with a Q50 and a D42. Uh, it was my first attempt. Awesome. Congratulations yes. on getting thank this you. score. It's quite difficult to reach this. Mm -hmm. And you were able to do that in the first attempt. So hats off to you for that. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So in your mm -hmm. opinion, what were few factors or actions you took that made all the difference and made this happen? There are quite a few. I would say uh, sticking to the basics first, daily practice is a very important thing. I made sure that I practiced around five points and five verbal questions every day. Actually, I had a difficult routine. I uh, have a 48 hour work week, which often extends to more than 55 hours uh, a week. So I barely got a couple of hours uh, a day to practice. So I made sure that I made full utilization of that time. I tried to listen to some of the GMAT Club YouTube webinars and some of the experts global video resources on my drives to and from work actually. I mean I drive to and from work right. and uh, listening to the videos also helped. And then I would say sticking to official verbal questions because in I think verbal it's uh, important to stay stick to official questions. And thirdly I would say I didn't try to time myself right from the start. I gave myself ample time. I knew I had the sort of time issues. So I knew I had to take a longer time than most people. So I I, I didn't actually schedule my exam until I finished the, the all the questions of the OG. So uh, that's how I took it. So my overall prep took, took around five months because of the time issues. Don't, I, I didn't try to answer the time, like I said, uh, timed, uh, practicing the timed questions uh, that uh, that's something I started only in the fourth month. Uh, before that, I was just uh, trying to solve the questions and going through the, trying to analyze the mistakes that I made during the practice. And uh, I tried to use the mocks strategically mm -hmm. because taking the mocks is, uh, I mean, it's a, uh, there are twofold advantages to taking the mocks. So, well, firstly, you get to analyze your questions, analyze the mistakes that you made, mm -hmm. and uh, take stock of your preparation. And the second the aspect is that you get to uh, get a feel for the actual exam. Mm -hmm. So in both ways, I would like to, I, I used only two official mocks, but uh, I used them strategically. I like, uh, after I finished the OG, I took the first mock and uh, the mm -hmm. second mock I took a week before the, the actual exam. And around uh, two weeks before the exam, I uh, like took time off from the office eventually. So I took the last two weeks, I dedicated the last two weeks entirely for uh, this uh, prep, for, for preparing for the actual exam. So these are some of the things that I, help, I think I helped me. All right, that's yeah. awesome. And it's amazing how you were able to get your target score with five months of preparation from the official yeah. material and online resources. Yeah. So with what area on GMAT did you struggle the most and how did you overcome that challenge? I'm basically from an engineering background. So Quant was, uh, I mean, I was familiar with uh, the kind of questions that Quant uh, throws at us. So I would say that uh, CR was something new for me. I didn't, I hadn't... Uh, experienced anything like CR in, the, in my past uh, studies or in my career in there. So that was a new uh, challenge for me. Initially, I struggled a lot with CR, uh, but then gradually I realized that it's about pattern recognition. So I uh, refer to a lot of uh, YouTube videos or webinars on uh, the GMAT Club uh, uh, webinars and some of the Express Global videos to try to get the a feel for the questions that uh, usually come in the official uh, exams. Right. Uh, gradually, uh, through a lot of practice, I improved the CR bit. For DS uh, in the quant, actually for DS, I struggled initially because I solved the entire question, but while marking the, the option, I chose some different option. Actually, I uh, sort of forgot what the question was asking. So I solved this uh, by, I learned this trick from one of the uh, YouTube videos. What I did was I tried to uh, note down what uh, the question was asking right at the start, mm -hmm. uh, say X, and then I uh, marked the question mark after that. After that, I tried to solve, do whatever solving I uh, wanted to do. So that helped me uh, clear the obstacle in DS. For SC, I was initially good in SC, uh, relatively. But then uh, towards the end, I try, I, my sort of accuracy dropped in SC. Probably because I sort of tried to overthink, maybe. That's something that one should avoid, trying to overthink in SC. But then, uh, fortunately, in the actual exam, on the actual exam, uh, I was, uh, I answered all the SC questions correctly. So that worked out well for me. 
Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. So, what advice would you give to the future candidates regarding their complete journey of GMAT prep? I would say uh, first and foremost, uh, try to set yourself a reasonable target. Don't uh, work against a stiff target. Mm-hmm. This work, uh, this is for both the timeline and the target score. Uh, when I started out my preparation, uh, my friends told me that around two months, two three months uh, is sufficient for the for the GMAT. Mm-hmm. I, and I thought to myself, I don't have that much time. And I don't have that much time to prepare uh, well within uh, three months. I mean, right. I could have done that, but I, I could have ended up with uh, 690 or 700. So mm-hmm. the best thing is to uh, give yourself ample time to prepare. Don't uh, rush yourself. That's one thing. Second is, I would say, stick to official verbal questions as much as possible. Don't try to, don't exhaust official verbal questions too early because then you will find yourself struggling to get good verbal, good quality verbal questions. I would say don't go into timed mode right from the start mm-hmm. because uh, that has a negative effect in my opinion. So try to understand what the problem is asking. Try to solve the questions first and get a feel for the questions before going into uh, pra- practicing in timed mode. And uh, then I will say that taking mocks is good. I mean, it's really useful uh, to take stock of your uh, preparation. But uh, if you take too many mocks, it's a drain on your energy uh, because you don't want to take uh, do anything half-heartedly. I mean, you can try and take a, week, a mock every week, but uh, ultimately it's a drain on your energy. You won't be able to focus 100% every week. So mm-hmm. I'd say take mocks strategically and uh, use them to your advantage, like analyze every mistake that you made. And make sure you don't repeat those mistakes, especially if those are careless mistakes. That's uh, right. one thing that's uh, critical for the GMAT. Yeah, I would say uh, try to, on the day of the exam, I would say try to stay calm because ultimately, even if you have three months, four months, five months, whatever uh, preparation you have, it boils down to the day of the exam. So uh, try to stay calm. Uh, it's difficult, I know. It's about the mental aspect a lot. But uh, in case uh, you find questions going against you, uh, you find it uh, difficult uh, to find answering the questions difficult, it's a good sign. Mm-hmm. And I uh, use this advice to uh, my benefit also because I was struggling, uh, I mean, I was struggling to, I was struggling to answer the questions uh, in the quant, uh, with, uh, in the middle part of the quant uh, section. And mm-hmm. I recall the, an advice that I saw one of, in one of the, the Experts Global videos that if you are struggling to answer the question. That means you are good, doing well. That means uh, mm. that means you are doing well. That's why you are getting the tough questions. That's uh, one thing. Right. And uh, don't plan on guessing uh, randomly. That's uh, one advice I would say. Mm-hmm. Because guessing doesn't work. Uh, make yeah. sure that uh, you've eliminated as many wrong answers as possible. Yes, absolutely. That is true. So, is there any final suggestion or message that you would like to give to all the viewers and future candidates mm-hmm. watching this video? I would say if you are targeting the GMAT, it's uh, better to get your concepts right because usually the concepts are basic, but uh, they require a very thorough understanding. Mm. So for that, I would advise them if you are not sure, if you don't have any um, resources uh, of your own, then try to gather resources from some online platforms or some even offline platforms also, but uh, try to get the concepts right because otherwise uh, you will struggle and try to assess your situation first and then uh, go accordingly. And one more thing I uh, forgot to mention uh, in the last uh, question regarding the GMAT prep uh, is that answering the first few questions of the GMAT correctly is very critical. Uh, it happened to me that uh, when, I, when, I, when the exam started, the first question popped up all of a sudden. I mean, I was not expecting it. To. That's why I, I would say that uh, use the mocks wisely. I was expecting some other screen to pop up before the first question, then, but suddenly the first question came up. So that startled me and my mind went completely blank at the start of the exam. So uh, for the first question, I spent nearly six minutes, but I was uh, determined not to make a mistake on the first question. I read and reread the question, I read it three times and make sure that I gathered my composer and I answered the question. So answering the first few questions correctly is very critical in my opinion, because that can be a difference between a, say a 750 and a 720. So uh, that's way, that way, if you're ha- targeting high, try to make sure that you don't lose your composure and uh, answer the first few questions at least correctly. Then you take it from there, whatever uh, the exam throws at you. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> that is true. Right. Awesome. So thank you so much, Rajdeep, for giving us your time and interviewing with us. I'm sure your suggestions, they're going to help a lot of students in their GMAT prep. So thanks a lot. Thanks to Express Global. Thanks to Shita once again. Very, it was very nice uh, talking to you. Thank yes. You.
Yeah, it was great knowing about your GMAT prep journey as well. And uh, congratulations yeah. once again on getting a 750 on your GMAT. And all the best Thank for you. your Thank applications. You. Thanks a lot. Bye. Take care. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you.